Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and as we start to wind down the year, it's time to take a look back at the best new knives that 2023 had to offer. Let's check them out. All right, we're going to be taking a look today at both folders and fixed blades. I'm going to break the, uh, the folding knife categories down into three different price brackets. Uh, and then pick a winner from each and then pick an ultimate winner as well as picking uh, some really great fixed blades. First off, zero to $100 price range. I'm of the opinion that in this past year, 2023, the most exciting stuff coming out has been in the more affordable price range at these lower price points. Higher end stuff has never been better, but the lower end stuff is what's truly been exciting for me to see this year. In fact, we actually did an entire video on the best and expensive folders of 2023 uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, because there were so many that we thought it warranted its own uh, spotlight. So we'll leave a link to the corner, or we'll leave a link in the corner to that video uh, where you can go check that out if you wish. But for the top three zero to $100 knives this year, let's start off with the Kershaw Iridium. This is one of many, many great new crossbar locking knives uh, that came out this year. Uh, stuff like the Real Steel Sacra, the Boker Kihon DC, uh, Vostid Raccoon, CGRB Hectare, tons of great crossbar locking folders. But this one right here seems to rise to the top. It is Kershaw's uh, one of the four releases in the uh, beginning of this year that brought the crossbar lock to Kershaw's lineup. They call it the Duralock. And the Iridium has hit a really nice point, not just in the Kershaw releases, but across the crossbar lock releases this year of just the right materials, just the right fit and finish at just the right price. This is a $65 knife with a D2 blade, about 3.4 inches long, bit of a stylish drop point, aluminum handles in a nice attractive gray color with accenting backspacer here. It's a good color that seems neutral without seeming boring. It's kind of a nice trick in a, uh, a world of black handled knives. They also did the crossbar lock right. They call it the Duralock. It comes with a reversible pocket clip for one thing, which on an ambidextrous lock, you always got to have an ambidextrous pocket clip in my opinion. And with ball bearings in the pivot of this knife right here, it is just a free floating, nice wrist flicking experience all around. Fit and finish is great. Nice established legacy company like Kershaw with a great new design, kind of heralding a new direction of some of their offerings. We're going to see, I'm sure, a lot more of their crossbar lock in the future. And if they're half as good as this, we're all going to be seeing some really great stuff indeed. Next up, the Civivi Vision FG. Uh, now this actually started life as a Wii Knives release last year, and it very nearly, that knife made it onto my best of the year coverage last year. But there were a few things that kind of held it back. Now with this Civivi release, at a uh, nicer price point is a uh, certainly a noteworthy thing, but all the things that held it back from the more premium version making the list were fixed, shall we say with this Civivi version. We'll say they started about 78 bucks for the standard versions with a Nitro V blade, or you can get this really nice VG10 Damascus uh, for just under a hundred. So definitely the most expensive in this budget category this year. Three and a half inch on the blade, modified sheep's foot with angle to it, makes it great for work on a cutting board or any other kind of surface work. And it's just a good general purpose blade too, with that nice strong profile. Now we've got G10 for the handles here and that same Snex Superlock as the original, which is spine mounted and easy to flick open with the left or the right hand. And the biggest change, the most noteworthy change in my opinion is the pocket clip. The Wii version came with a spine mounted clip, which is a little awkward to use for most folks and something that I don't really dig. But this is a more conventional deep carry pocket clip mounted from the side and it is reversible to maintain the ambidextrous quality right here makes this just all around, I think a much easier and much better knife to carry every day and certainly much more affordable too. It's always a nice thing. Action is great. Fit and finish is typical Civivi quality, which is to say quite high all in all, even though it's the most expensive here still represents a pretty good bargain. Now third on the list is the most affordable, uh, I'd say solidly in the more budget camp coming in at about $47. 
it's the Kaiser Amicus. Now this is one of Kaiser's new releases in their newly introduced Laconic series, which is designed to bring their design language and fit and finish to a lower price point. And even though at 47 bucks, even within the Laconic lineup, but also amongst some of the other imported brands, you can definitely get more knife, more premium knives even for that same kind of money. But there's something about the way the design of the Amicus came together and the way it actually feels in hand it kind of becomes more than the sum of its parts. It's a little bit of a Goldilocks knife. We've got a three inch blade here, which is a nice convenient size, and yet it's broad enough and chunky enough without losing its slicing capability that it feels almost larger than its size actually measures. You can do bigger cuts. You can feel like you can do bigger jobs with it. And the handles certainly contributed to that as well, thanks to their wide profile here. It just feels right in the hand. Like I said, a bit of a Goldilocks thing. We have a button lock here, which allows you to do that wrist flicking thing we all like nowadays, as well as of course the flipper tab, which works quite nicely, a reversible pocket clip. It's got all the right features in a design that just kind of sings, but sings quietly. It doesn't shout about itself, but it feels oh so right. And in the end, that is what helped the Amicus rise above the all the other slew of great affordable knives out there this year. Definitely worth checking out. All right, we're gonna pick a winner from the uh, budget category, uh, but before we do, we do have to uh, overview the rest of the categories first. So we'll come back to that at the end. Now, the next category, which we're loosely defining as 100 to $250 in price range. What out there stands above the rest? Well, first up, the Microtech MSI. I don't know if any knife made as big of a splash this year as the MSI, and it truly has kind of heralded a new direction, a new philosophy of design for Microtech knives. First and foremost, this is not an automatic knife. This is a manual folding knife, something you don't see often from Microtech on their USA made side at least. And it comes with a new lock called the Ram Lock. It is kind of a hybrid between a typical crossbar lock and something like Spyderco's ball bearing lock. You've got this massive chunk of steel with a spring coiled behind it to help push it forward and lock that blade in place. It operates really similarly to those two locks. Pull the lock bar back. You can flick it open or closed, closed or open. And then of course, you've got good manual action as well. On top of that, we have non-proprietary hardware, you know, simple Torx uh, hardware here for the pivots and construction, which is something uh, that is different. Microtech has been known for using proprietary hardware for years. This knife also saw the introduction of their new proprietary collaboration on the steel front. This is M390MK, which is based on M390 with some slight variations that one, aid them in machining, but it also should get just a little bit more edge retention out of it, a little bit more performance. So that's a lot of new stuff in one knife. Then there was the price. They introduced this with G10 with a $250 price point. And that was already pretty big news, but the real shocker came a few months ago with the polymer handled versions made in the USA with that M390 MK steel, big four inch blade of it priced at about $175, and that is a true shot across the bow to the other American-made competition in that price point. This knife simply offers more, quite honestly, and it is a distinctive design. It gives you something new without aping anything else. Truly an awesome accomplishment. Next up, we've got the Andrew Demko Knives Shark Cub, which is a spinoff of the AD 20.5 series, but in my opinion, it's even better at this size than the 20.5. What I mean by that is the 20.5, highly successful knife, very cool knife, and it works at its size, but it was essentially just a shrunken down version of the AD20, and it worked, but this Shark Cub works even better because it feels like it was intended to be this size from the beginning. Let me tell you about that size. Two and three quarter inch blade, 20 CV steel in this case with a black aluminum handle. And it's that handle shape that really makes it feel at home in this size. It's gonna work, I think, for a bigger variety of hand sizes than the 20.5, even though the handle is smaller. 
because the shape allows more neutral holds for fingers hanging off the back of the handle. Pretty cool. The blade steel itself is also kept a little bit thinner than the 20.5. So again, in this size range, it's going to slice a little bit better. You don't need an overbuilt pocket knife with a two and three quarter inch blade. We've also got a new blade shape with the spear point right here, or they call it uh, the slicer shark blade, as well as uh, the modified sheep's foot or shark's foot that they have and a clip point profile. We've got a deep carry pocket clip and you have the shark lock. Ambidextrous, fun to use, finger safe, strong, just an excellent locking mechanism that forms a bit of a thumb ramp when you're using it, doesn't get in the way. And the price on these versions right here coming in about $200. Third in this category is the CRKT Redemption, an astonishing release from CRKT this year. Now, this is not the first year that CRKT has done premium collaborations with some of the best knife manufacturers in the world, but the ones they came out with in 2023 seem to be hitting on a much higher level, on a much more, have had much more impact than previous releases. From their uh, Italian-made folders, the Michael Walker collaborations, to their new collaborations with Hogue Knives. USA made, fantastic manufacturer, and this redemption especially blew everyone away. We've got a blade that's just over four inches long with magna cut steel, steel bolsters, G10 handle, crossbar lock, excellent action. I mean, Hogue is very well known for their great crossbar locking action. And then the price on this came in at about $225. They could have easily charged 300 to 350 for this knife and been competitive with the other stuff that's out there. So the fact that they came in as low as they did, instant success and it was easy to see why. The value was undeniable and the build quality also truly, truly exceptional for the money. All right, now we'll come to the premium folder segment and we're kind of defining this as just 250 and up, sky's the limit. Uh, and we're talking about production knives here, not custom. So keep that in mind as well. The first knife is something that could have gone either way. You know, 250 is obviously an arbitrary kind of cutoff point. This knife sits right about at that $250 mark. This is a $249 knife on the knife center right now. So we could have gone up or down with it, uh, depending on you know category, but it felt a little more like it belonged in the premium side of things. So we kicked it up there, bumped it into that range because of all these categories, the premium range was the hardest for us to kind of narrow down to three. I mentioned this a little bit earlier or alluded to it anyway, premium knives, premium production knives have never been better. They're better than ever, like truly iterative improvements over everything that, everything that has come before. But a lot of it's, they're all so good, not a lot stands apart from the other. And that's what we you know, ultimately came down to. What are the things that stood apart from the other stuff out there? Because that makes it a little more interesting than just another perfectly executed frame lock flipper, which there's plenty of perfectly executed frame lock flippers out there these days. So for us, the reason that these three knives that we chose do stand apart is each of them in one way or another is really pushing what that company is capable of. It's the company taking what they do, trying to get to the next level and trying to make a statement with their manufacturing. I think they all succeeded. And that's why the Voss Deed is in this category. This is the RS Chaos, uh, comes in 249 as mentioned. You've got an M390 blade, titanium handle, button actuation for the lock right here. And the lock itself is the reason this is deserving of mention. Not only is this the, the first or the most premium knife Vosteed has ever made in the uh, short existence of that company, they're also the first and to my knowledge, still the only production knife company to take a stab at Spyderco's compression lock now that the patent is more widely uh, usable or, or patent has expired there. They can't call it the compression lock. For that reason, they're calling it the top liner lock, which is not great, I think, as a, knife, as a name, but there's no industry standard like there is with crossbar lock yet. So might have to come up with something there, but it is button actuated much like the Spyderco smock. And rather than just being a simple liner that interfaces with the tang of the blade, you've got that little tab in the liner that sits inside a matching tab on the blade itself. So you've got compression going on. You've got locking 
force distributed in multiple directions, not just the one. And they just simply nailed it. The lockup is perfect. The blade is super stable. The action works great. Truly a, uh, a statement for what they want to do in the future. And they pulled off wonderfully. Blade itself, 3.3 inches, M390 steel. If I didn't mention that already, you can get it with this modified sheep's foot or a more modified Warncliffe style. They're calling it, I think that one's the sax blade style. A couple different blade finishes as well. Beautifully faceted handles, fills the hand quite nicely. Because of the button style actuation of this compression lock, you do lose some space at the uh, heel of the blade to make room for that button. As such, they have made it into a usable index finger spot choil, shall we say. Now I may have made a slightly different choice with the compound grinds here. This stouter section at the back is going to be hard to use because it's so short. And even the higher flat grind on the, uh, the front section is still plenty durable thanks to the blade stock, but definitely a statement piece for sure. Next up and certainly going to be the most controversial inclusion in this list, it is the Benchmade Narrows. Controversial, of course, because uh, of the high price of it coming in about $522. But what they've done with this is kind of taken what was established with their bug out a few years ago, that being super slicey, super thin, super lightweight knives and taken it as far as they could possibly go. The result of that is a titanium folder that's just barely over a quarter inch thick. The titanium is kept nice and thin and pocketed out as well to remove more weight. I mean, we're coming in about 2.4 ounces on this knife with a three and a half inch blade or just about a three and a half inch blade M390, super slim, very slicey, and even decently comfortable in the hand. They went a little bit wider uh, than they might have had to otherwise to counteract the thinness of the handles a little bit in order that you can still get a solid enough grip on it. Other things that changed, we've got very thin thumb studs there because even though some folks will still use them and they are still usable, most folks are probably, at least I would, just be using the Axis Flick. And speaking of their crossbar lock, a re-engineered Axis lock mechanism right here. You've got this stepped lock bar release on the side, which is quite nice and different spring construction here on the back anchored to a uh, post in the middle rather than you know dual side omega springs which is more typical of benchmade's axis lock they just kind of pushed themselves to the limit is it worth the money that's up for you to decide but it is certainly an achievement in engineering and given that other folks besides benchmade can use a crossbar lock mechanism nowadays it's good to see them continuing to try and push their dominance with that lock style forward to the next level. Next up is the Wii Knives Diatomic Flipper coming in about $391 here. We've got a 20 CV blade, three and three eighths of an inch long and a distinctive handle profile going on. And for me, it's the way this handle is built and put together that is super impressive. You've got essentially a cap here at the back screwing forward into the pieces of titanium comprising the rest of the handles instead of a typical backspacer type of situation. And the fit between all the pieces, if it weren't for this contrasting color here, you'd barely be able to tell. I mean, it is so precisely fit together. It is astonishing. The rest of the knife is also very much a statement piece. It looks symmetrical pretty much from both sides. You've got two pocket clips with the wheel pinch point there on each. They are milled, they are pocketed, they feature inset screws, really complex machined part going on there. And again, it fits perfectly. The grinds on the blade are impeccable. The sharpened edge on the bottom side of this, you know, essentially dagger profile doesn't eat up the space that that side is, is taking up. So it still looks symmetrical. You've got nice, precise grinds in the fullered section here, the little dimple here at the front. Really, really nice. And on top of that, it does all the stuff that we always does great, such as impeccable flipping action and solid frame locking lockup as well. 
definitely a piece that shows what their engineering team and their manufacturing capabilities are capable of. All right, let's move on to the best fixed blades of 2023, and then we'll go back and pick the winners. Uh, I'm not breaking down the fixed blades into price points, uh, and as such, we're just gonna take a look at my five picks for the best fixed blades of the year. The first is the Spartan Professional Grade Harsey Fighter. Uh, this was introduced uh, at a SHOT Show a couple of years ago, but they finally started getting delivered in mass this year. Price on this is about 128 bucks. It's made in the USA by K-Bar, the same folks who make the Becker Knife and Tool lineup. And the kind of ingredients list here is very similar to those. You've got 1095 CV for the blade, just over six inches long. So it's a little shorter than like your classic K-Bar, but still very much inspired by that type of combat knife. You've also got that Bill Harsey design handle, which is just plain perfect. The design of the shape and the contours and all that just plain works. They're very comfortable. They're injection molded, but they feel somehow premium. Like it almost feels more like, you know, a nice anodized aluminum rather than injection molded plastic or what are they using? You know, grivery, so I'm not even sure what they're using, but it feels phenomenal, feels great. You've got fluting for grip, you've got the ability to pinch on the front of those handles there, it kind of gets out of its own way. Solid, excellent combat knife, excellent survival knife. It's got an injection molded sheath with that thumb safety right there, so you can pull on that, it's not going anywhere until you pop that open and release. Comes with belt attachments here with nice heavy duty Velcro. Will fit a lot of aftermarket stuff too. There's honestly not a thing I would change about this knife. It is so good at what it does. Next up, we have the first made in Switzerland, Victorinox fixed blade, the Venture. And this is a knife that may not look like much, but in its simplicity, that's where you find the charm of this knife. Similar to something like an old school Kephart knife that is a fairly simple pattern, and yet it is something that just plain works, does everything you need your outdoor knife to do, this is going to occupy that same ground. We've got for $75 for the base versions, a four and a quarter inch, or almost a four and a quarter inch, 14C28N blade, good tough stuff for a stainless steel. And you've got an injection molded handle, few different colors, comfortable full length tang underneath that handle material protruding there at the back. You can scrape a fire steel or bark with the back of that, as well as the back of the spine here. You can drive quarter inch hex bits off the back, but those are just kind of secondary to the excellent ergonomics and the well thought out utility of this knife. Nice pinch scallops there for executing different grips. Very comfortable in standard grips, comfortable in a lot of alternate carving grips that you might be utilizing. And it's a great blade shape. Drop point, full flat grind, very versatile, not just for bushcraft, but for hunting and camping, even camp food prep. That's gonna do a pretty good job. The only real complaint I've heard about this knife uh, since it has come out is some people are kind of pushing this knife a little hard and might be getting a little bit of uh, edge deflection. Keep in mind, this is a fairly thin grind. This is not a super robust grind. So keeping that kind of first and foremost, this definitely performs within its design parameters. If you want it to be even tougher, you can definitely thicken that edge up a little bit to, uh, to suit your preferences. But as it is, definitely, definitely a new kind of comparison point, a new standard in the attainably priced bushcraft knife marketplace. As for the sheath, it's injection molded, it is reversible, comes with an elastic loop or a rubber loop at the top for more retention. You can easily swap this around. This also works as a uh, ember blower <laughs> that's been demonstrated. And then the pro version of this comes with a bow drill divot in the handle as well as more goodies uh, attached to the sheath. But even just at this, this base version, 75 bucks, it is excellent. Next up, we've got a pocket fixed blade, a genre near and dear to my heart. The MKM made Bob Terzola designed TPF Defense. Comes in about $169, $170 uh, for the base versions. 
comes with a magna cut steel blade and micarta handles on this one and it's classic terzola in its shape and that i mean it definitely is a blade that has its tactical applications but it's also just an all-around great usable blade and that continues here the magna cut is an excellent materials choice the handle is just long enough for most folks i would say and you can get a fairly solid grip on it as well very good consideration for a pocketable fixed blade and it truly is made and supplied to be carried in the pocket this is the pocket sheath that it arrives with it's made from leather it comes with mkm's magnetic strap or magnetic loop on the top which means you can slide it into your pocket loop the the magnetic loop around the hem of your pocket and it will be held in place pretty well you can still pull it out fairly easily when you want it to but that means this isn't going to be you know waddling around in your pocket getting where you don't want it to be push off on the leather draw that knife and it is ready to go it's a cool design it's a concept i love and it is from a company that is putting out some really nice designs this year in fact, their uh, Mura button lock folder nearly made it into the, uh, the premium category this year, but it was, it was just edged out. It's actually sitting over there off the side. Really cool knife. Next one is another Civivi product actually, and this is the newest on the list. This just came out uh, about a week before we're posting this video. And I don't know if this is the initial excitement or not, but this has instantly grabbed me. This is the Propagnator, starts at about 76 bucks for Micarta versions. You can also get it in everyone's favorite Ultim these days. The reason I'm so excited by this is it kind of marries up the, some of the other Civivi fixed blades in terms of their kind of over the top styling and wraps that up into a package that is more practical than most of those other knives. And there is a, a undeniable practical utility to this blade in my opinion. You've got a full working four-handed grip, as well as a just over four inch blade, D2 steel for a decently long lasting edge, compound grinds, fullers here on the front that actually work really well as a pinch point, a design that's gonna work well for heavy utility. It's got kind of a tactically inspired tip, but without any real finger guard protection here, I'd be a little hesitant to use it or recommend it uh, in that regard. But that said, there is a little bit of a, of a margin of safety between where your fingers are and where that edge starts. So that's a nice thing too. The grip works well. I'd have no qualms about carrying this camping, even doing a bit of camp food prep. It wouldn't be bad, even though it might be a little thick for that, you're gonna be able to pull it off. It's just a really distinctive design and it comes with an excellent sheath as well. It's made from Kydex comes with Civivi's T-clip on the back, also another Bob Terzola design, just should mention that. Even more versatile than your standard tech lock, which is kind of an industry standard at this point. You can carry it all kinds of different ways, very effectively, and put that very effective blade to use quite easily. All right, last but not least is actually a full-on machete from Condor. This is the Terrachete machete. And the price and features of this knife have combined in such a way that this is right now my go-to machete recommendation. As long as you're not looking to spend like a, a, a real small chunk of change at about 59 bucks, 59, $60 for one of these, it's still attainable and well worth the investment. Just think about it. Don't even think about it like a machete. We've got a 14 and a half inch blade of 1075 carbon steel, very tough with compound grinds, you've got convex for strength near the chopping side, Scandi for precision wood carving near the base. You've got even distal taper on this knife. You've got a forward lanyard hole, my preferred lanyard style for safety because you put your hand down here, loop around. If you drop the blade while you're swinging it, it tends to just sit there. It doesn't go flying around on you. You've got a full length tang underneath an over molded handle. It's protruding there at the back. If you wanted to make that crispy to do some striking with it, you could. It comes with an excellent injection molded sheath here as well. I mean, at 60 bucks for this Terrachete machete, it's undeniable for what it offers. It is a perfect survival machete, even if though it's a little bit longer than like that quote unquote 12 inch mark, that magic 12 inch mark. But it's not so big that it gets unwieldy for folks who aren't 
super experienced with machete work, this is it. This is my, my go-to machete recommendation easily, hands down, especially for the price. All right, it's time to pick some winners. Uh, since we're on fixed blades, we'll start with the fixed blade winner, and then we'll go back to the other categories and pick a winner there. And it's actually a pretty easy call for me. It's the Victorinox Venture. The design does it all at a price that's well within reach. And it is, as mentioned, a new standard by which other things will be compared. You know, similar to something like the Mora Garberg that came out a few years ago, or the, uh, the Condor uh, Pterosaur, for that matter. There are certain knives sitting in this uh, more affordable range that are just plain good, just plain undeniable. And I think this is now one of them too. All right, back to the budget side of the folding knife category. And I think the winner here has got to be the Iridium. It's a well-earned victory for this knife. It has sold incredibly well. The response to it has been ex truly exceptional. And in the, on top of that, it is signaling a new direction for some of the things Kershaw has to offer the knife enthusiast. Truly an exceptional knife. Up against that in the mid-priced category, I've got to go with the MSI. Like I said, new direction for Microtech with this particular knife and truly a warning shot to the other American-made competition in the price range. If you want to compete with something like the MSI, you're going to have to up your game. And for that reason right there, pushing the industry forward, pushing its competitors forward, which is going to have to happen, the MSI is definitely the best mid-price knife of the year. Now for the premium side, just like this was the hardest to uh, narrow down to three, this was the hardest to pick the winner to because they all do it right. They all do some really good things. Um, I'd say the most impressive feeling knife is the diatomic for sure. It just hits on all those different levels that show exactly how capable we knife company is. Next to that, the Vosteed, I think makes the biggest statement from any of these three companies right here. They had more to prove by pushing into this higher price range. And with the RS Chaos, I think they definitely pulled that off as well. Ultimately though, it came down to this. Which one of these is the best knife versus which one's the best showcase of technology? Because ultimately, style without substance, and I'm not saying these knives don't have substance, but style over substance anyway, only gets you so far. At the end of the day, a pocket knife has to cut. And I think of these three, the Narrows cuts a little better. This is the best designed for a pocket knife amongst these three, I think. So I'm gonna have to give it to the Narrows. I know this is controversial. I know we're gonna get a lot of comments down below telling me why I'm wrong and telling me why this was a stupid decision, but I'm gonna stand by it. The Vosteed comes with some compromises. You know, that button actuated uh, compression style lock there, you know, eats into blade space. The compound grind there, a little bit of a strange decision. Meanwhile, the diatomic, as cool as it is, Close that thing up and man, it is real hard to tell at a glance which side you're supposed to be flipping that knife from. On top of that, it's got two pocket clips. It's cool, it's awesome. Is it as practical as it could be? Maybe not. Maybe that's not the best criteria to judge the premium knife category, but it's the one I'm gonna judge it by because a knife has to be a knife first. Those are awesome knives, but the Narrows is gonna win over them. All right, so now we're down to three knives, each winners in their respective category. Which one do you think should win? I'll give you a moment to think about it, and then I'm gonna tell you why the MSI is hands down and handily the best new folding knife of the year. The price points it hits for what it's giving you is truly excellent. The fact that it is going to move or if the competitors have any sense, is going to move the competitors to compete harder, the MSI takes it. Best folding knife of the year. That's it, folks. Let me know what you thought of the picks down in the comments. Let me know what things you wished were on this table that weren't. If you have a, a better 
best knife of the year. I'd love to hear your suggestions as well. Leave them in the comments. And if you want to get your hands on any of these knives, check out the links in the description to take you to knifecenter.com. While you're there, don't forget about our long running knife rewards program, because when you're putting your money down for one of these knives today, the least thing you can do is earn some free money to spend on a future one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. Thanks for a very successful 2023 from me and from Thomas behind the camera and from Seth over there at his desk and everyone else here at the Knife Center. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.